So now I've got the the Korg uh, synthesizer working. I want to make uh, a MIDI uh, interface to it uh, that I can program using Python. Uh, so the idea is I'll make a Eurorack card, uh, probably about 6 HP wide, and uh, it'll kind of look like this is my thinking at the moment. It'll probably change as I work on it, but have an OLED up the top just to have some basic status information, so like the IP of the uh, uh, of the Pi in here, host name, and probably display what MIDI notes being played as it uh, plays notes. I have a DIN uh, socket out, just a normal DIN socket. Uh, uh, the Pi will be running at 3.3 volts for the output, so uh, the point with MIDI is you won't be able to sync around 5 milliamps of current through the MIDI out. Uh, so I need to set it up to do that. And then, uh, you know, it'll just be a normal MIDI out, output. Uh, it'll drive up to 16 channels of MIDI information. Uh, and then the thing I want to do is kind of the software side of things is uh, have a Python uh, API interface to what the MIDI is doing. And then uh, put a web interface over there. So just do my standard sort of thing of uh, putting web services over the, the MIDI a API and then use Angular to make kind of a more user-friendly uh, interface to that. So I can do, play around, do different things with it. Some of the ideas I have is to make just a simple sequencer uh, that you can work on through the web interface. Uh, but there'll probably be more things I want to do with that as well. And then also I'm going to leave space on here to put uh, uh, various outputs. So again, being Eurorack, I probably more often use control voltages than MIDI, so uh, if I don't want to use MIDI out to a device, I also want to have CV coming out, uh, so I have the control voltage, the gate, and probably just the velocity information coming out as a 128-bit uh, uh, voltage as well. Uh, have that run at uh, volt per octave, and we'll see how we go with that. We may change some of the the outputs on this as, as well. Um, and also have it either track directly to the MIDI channel one or in the web interface be able to swap it to say run off channel two so you'd have actually two outputs of, of notes going at the same time. That's the plan. Let's uh, try putting that together. I at least want to get the hardware put together in this video and then later videos will concentrate more on the software. Hey, I'm jumping forward. A little bit here, but originally I planned on putting this together using an orange pie. I like the orange pie, uh, but as I started working with it for uh, MIDI, I found there's two main problems was one, using Ambience, the uh, operating system that seems to work with the orange pie zero, uh, but it's a lot more complicated setting up the, the libraries and things I needed. It didn't seem to have such a good set as uh, Raspberry Pi has. And then the real killer was the wireless on the Orange Pi Zero is really bad. Uh, I know that I saw a few, when I first looked at it, I was seeing like uh, 200, 300 millisecond delay for any uh, uh, wireless uh, ethernet stuff I was doing, which is way too slow to be useful. So in the end, it sort of counted itself out because of the wireless and all show a few links where I saw uh, there are some problems with Orange Pi Zero's uh, wireless. I think it's the chip and then the drivers for that aren't that great. So in the end I swapped over to using a, a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W, so that has a wireless interface. Um, it's pretty compact, it may be even more compact than the Orange Pi. Uh, the nice thing about it was it's a lot easier loading the libraries, I didn't have to do get so many prerequisites loaded to get it all set up. Um, and uh, it's, it's probably even more compact than the Orange Pi Zero. I've got some uh, pins soldered in at the moment, which uses up a bit more room, but when I do this for real, if this is still just the prototype, I'll just wire, wire directly to the board, so use even less room in here. Once I decided on the Raspberry Pi Zero, I just used a Raspberry Pi Imager to load a uh, copy of Raspberry and Light onto the SD card and up in GitHub I've got the links down in the description below I put my setup uh, script that I used and let's have a quick look at 
running that setup script. So first I had to uh, make that setup script executable by bash. And I just started running it in bash. So the things it does is first it does an update and an upgrade. And I also install git on the on the Raspberry Pi so I can uh, use git and github to sync up files to the Raspberry Pi. N note in here you're going to have to change the script to put your actual git name and git e email you, you want to use. After that, that I installed Python. Python's already a part of Raspberry but this just makes sure it's installed along with pip3 and all the aliasing for Python becomes pointing to point Python 3, then I install the GPIO library and the OLED library. I'm using the Luma library for OLED and this can take a while because there's a lot of uh, uh, supporting libraries, especially for the OLED where it needs to be able to uh, draw using fonts and things. So a lot of imaging type libraries get downloaded and installed as part of this. Okay, so once that's installed, the last part is just to install Pi MIDI library, which just writes MIDI out onto the serial port. So that's all installed. So I just checked the start time and the end time for running the script. And for me, it took about 12 and a half minutes to run the whole script. This page was sped up. So the last thing was just to work out where I'm going to plug things in. So the OLED gets plugged into the I2C port. And the MIDI out attaches to the UART-TX port. And then I can just use any of the GPIO pins. Okay, the last piece of setup is to enable the serial and I2C port. So I go into Raspberry config, go into peripherals, under serial port. I don't want the log on shell to be accessible over the serial port so I say no to that but I do enable the serial port and also if, under interface options I go to the I2C option and turn that on as well and then exit raspberry config will ask me whether I want to reboot and yes I reboot a uh, quick look at my testing setup so I've got a Raspberry Pi uh, 02W. On that I've got a LED connected on GPIO 21. Then I've got my OLED connect connected, which is an SSD 1306. Then I'm using an FT232 USB to TTL converter to be able to talk to my Surface PC. And I'm running Serial Debug Assistant to be able to see the serial traffic. So I've got some test programs to try out the main three functions I need the uh, the Pi board to do. Uh, so first up I want to make sure I control GPIO so I'm just using the the standard RPI GPIO interface and flashing an LED. Uh, so let's try running that. So that's good. I got the flashing LED. Uh, next thing I wanted to do was make sure I could use the OLED. So I'm going to display things on there while the MIDI's going on. And same thing, just run that as a Python program. Let's have a look at it. So in this case, I'm using the Luma OLED library, and I'm just going to display a Hello World inside a, a white frame. OLED turned on and then turns off at the end of the program. And the final one is to make sure I could uh, send MIDI over the serial. So first I wanted to make sure I could talk to the serial port. Uh, and uh, you can see in the setup script I talk about how to set up the serial port. So it's going to be on dev serial zero. So let's try that out. Do I echo 
hello and I'll send that to dev serial zero and you see there on the on my serial uh, terminal it's uh, connected through a USB to TTL converter that I see hello come through so now let's try the actual MIDI code. First I'm going to swap the serial converter over to show hex. Let's have a look at the MIDI code I'm using. So in this case I'm using the Pi MIDI library which just sends a uh, um, MIDI to a serial port uh, does formatting to some of the messages. I'll still need to add some more code over the top of that. That's good. I see the expected MIDI characters uh, sent over the serial port. Testing the uh, Pi MIDI out, I made a 3D print of a uh, Eurorack uh, holder for it. Uh, so this kind of follows my initial design, so space for an OLED to go in, didn't plug space, and then I got three connector holes here, and it all fits on a MIDI rack. So let's look from the side, from the back, and you see some mounting points for the Pi Zero uh, 2W. So I printed the whole thing up. And then I had a look at what I needed to do for the electronics. So basically, uh, coming out of the Raspberry Pi is the UART. Uh, so I had to have the correct uh, resistors there uh, for 3.3 volts. So I'm using a 33 and a 10 volt ohm resistors. So this is what the whole thing looked like when I mounted it up. Uh, I actually put the resistors against the DIN socket and then I'm still prototyping so I'm just using uh, patch cables to connect everything. So the first measurement I wanted to get was uh, how much the voltage decreases under load and not under load. So first I measure the voltage across the output. And I'm seeing 3.24 volts across the output with no load. So once I connected it into a, a MIDI input that dropped down to 2.78 volts so it looks like there is some load on it uh, to find out what the load was I put an oscilloscope across the 33 ohm resistor and I measured about 200 millivolts there I used a couple of oscilloscopes but 200 millivolts seems to be about the right number so using Ohm's law that turns out is drawing about 6.1 milliamps of current which is about right you want about 5 milliamps for MIDI so here's the first test uh, just a simple uh, single note that worked okay so here's the next test where I tried doing just some ascending notes using some Python uh, let's let that run so that's working uh, but that's a bit of a pretty basic and uh, simple uh, sequence so I want to try something more complicated so this is my fancy version of a test so I had ascending and descending uh, notes going at the same time and then I also wanted to be able to uh, set the Korg synth up so I was doing something a bit more creative so I've got some echo and some playing with the filter here and that's this is kind of where I want to be with the the Pi MIDI so now I know I can control MIDI using my uh, Raspberry Pi. Uh, next videos will start looking at some more interesting software things to do with it.